Hi, and thanks for joining me. This is an overview of the contents of the Finite Element Analysis Best Practices course from ANSYS. The course tries to give you an insight as to what's available in the ANSYS software and of good procedures to follow in trying to do your FEA work. We hope that this course is of value to both beginners and to people with intermediate amounts of experience. I'm going to go through the contents of the course. It commences with an overview, with a statement of goals, fundamentals that are followed, a discussion of the advantages and disadvantages of finite element analysis versus analytical approaches, a mention of the kinds of finite element analysis that are available, and a mention of FEA problems that are both readily solvable and that pose a serious challenge for the user. In a second module, they have a brief mention of the theory of what's behind finite element analysis. They'll talk about structural mechanics and the fundamental equations that are involved. They'll mention the fact that in order to get stiffness matrices for individual elements, a numerical integration has to take place over the volume of an element. They'll mention the characteristics of structural and thermal solutions. That's followed by a couple of workshops. Doing the workshops is of considerable value. For one thing, it forces you into using the interface to the software. Having done that will make understanding of subsequent modules easier for the user. There'll be one on meshing and one on integration. In a third module, they go into a discussion of element types. Not all of the element types available in ANSYS, but some of the principal ones that users will employ. In the Workbench Mechanical Interface, element type selection takes place in the background, although the user does have some choice over what goes on, such as whether to use high order or low order elements in meshing. Note that a high order element has mid-side nodes on a side, while a low-order element does not. So there'll be first an overview of elements, a discussion of three-dimensional versus two-dimensional elements. 2D elements are a simplification like plane stress, plane strain, or axisymmetric modeling. There'll be a mention of shell elements and also of beam elements. Users could note that beam elements can be converted into pipe elements which are capable of having an internal pressure. We'll also briefly mention link elements, which serve for truss, rod, spar, or what might be called a link. ANSYS has contact elements that detect the contact between parts and enable certain behaviors, such as frictional versus frictionless behavior. We'll also mention the fact that we can do thermal modeling with thermal elements. Thermal elements will have a conductivity matrix. The thermal models also support loads such as convection and radiation. There'll be two workshops in this module, one on selecting elements and another dealing with a curved beam. When we move on into module four, we discuss pre-processing. There are three modules with parts one, two, and three. We'll mention general considerations for constructing a model and the CAD model geometry that's imported. We'll talk about meshing a model and checking the shapes of the elements to see whether they are decently shaped and will behave well in a model. We'll talk about connecting meshes together and also the mixing of element types. Material properties in ANSYS can be temperature dependent and an example is a coefficient of thermal expansion. That is one of the most commonly temperature dependent properties that users may need to take into consideration. We'll mention singularities, stress singularities, such as the stresses at a sharp inside corner or where we have a point load on a 2D or 3D model, and there will be a workshop on singularities. 
In Module 5, we'll continue with preprocessing, Part 2, and we'll talk about symmetry in FEA models. Reflective, in which a left side looks the same as a right side. A periodic symmetry, which repeats itself as you move along in a straight line. And a cyclic symmetry, in which, for example, a fan blade repeats itself as you go around the circumference of a fan. We'll also talk about axisymmetric models. These allow the modeling of something that has been spun around an axis in a complete 360 degree circle. And there will be a workshop to consider symmetry and anti-symmetry. With anti-symmetry, the model looks the same on two sides of a mirror image, but the loads are reversed on one side versus the other. In a third module on preprocessing, we will start off by talking about submodeling. Submodeling takes advantage of Semvenant's principle and creates a fine mesh in a small region of a large model, imports displacements from a large, coarsely meshed model, imposes them on the boundary of a submodel, and finds much more accurate stresses in the interior of the submodel. Workbench Mechanical does support this. We'll talk about preloading joints. We'll talk about interference fits, such as a shrink fit, and modeling techniques that ANSYS makes available. We'll mention orthotropic materials, in which, for example, Young's modulus of elasticity is not the same in the X, Y, and Z directions. That could be the behavior, for example, of a material such as wood. Coordinate systems have to be aligned properly in the elements for the orthotropic material properties to point in the correct directions. We'll also mention the possibility of a dynamic analysis. ANSYS supports various kinds of dynamic analysis. Modal analysis, harmonic response, response spectrum analysis, random vibration analysis, and full transient analysis. And note that transient analysis is supported both by modal superposition techniques or with full transient analysis. Now the full transient run will support nonlinearities. We move on to a module on solving. We'll talk about solvers available in ANSYS. In the Workbench interface, you can activate either a direct solver or an iterative solver or simply let the software make the choice for you. We'll talk about the fact that you may do a nonlinear analysis and some of the things that cause a model to become nonlinear. We'll talk about whether models are well-conditioned or ill-conditioned. In ill-conditioned models, we have extreme values in the global stiffness matrix. We'll talk about applying loads and boundary conditions where the word boundary conditions implies what they call supports in the ANSYS workbench interface. We'll mention natural boundary conditions where no load has been applied by the user. We'll talk about constraining rigid body motions in static structural models so that they don't fly off into space. And we'll talk about a checklist for model review. In a final module, We'll talk about post-processing with general considerations, steps that are typically followed, and the question of whether we have decent correlation between FEA models and what you get out of actual physical testing. And again, there'll be a workshop to help reinforce ideas. We hope that you'll find this course to be of value, helping you improve your approach to finite element modeling. Thank you for joining me.